Hey guys, Jared here, Magnetic Men's Club. Welcome back to the channel. Good to see you. Today we're going to talk about the 10 truths about job hunting, about interviews that a lot of people don't talk about. Most people are not self-employed. Most people don't really have that entrepreneurial mindset. Most people, you know, need a job to sort of eat, kind of live, things like that. So this video is more specific to those of you who are looking for a job, might have a job, looking to level up to the next job, or who are just starting their careers, understand these 10 truths about interviews. If you can arm yourself with this knowledge, you're going to be a much more effective interview. So with that, let's get after it early on. I've been self-employed for a while, but early on in my career, I remember a few times where I absolutely thought I nailed that fucking interview only to never get a call back. Maybe you guys can relate to this. Maybe this is a recurring problem for you. Maybe it used to be a recurring problem for you, but it's not until I understood much later in life when I understood social dynamics, power dynamics, what I was actually doing wrong in those interviews. But the good news is I'm here for you. Good old Jared. I'm going to break down some of the realities in the market so that you can better be prepared when interviewing, which is going to make you a stronger candidate. Hopefully that badass attitude of yours, that can do attitude, that positive attitude mixed with these 10 concepts I need you to understand is going to get you that job. The very first thing I need you to understand, HR recruiters, they're really not interested in you at all. Their job is to protect the company, not you. You want to be friendly and likable in the interview, but you never want to forget that successful interviewing is based on power dynamics and you want to gain leverage for your negotiation because you're really the only one in your corner. The second truth is it's a market. You're the supply, the recruiters are the demand. And with all supply demand, power dynamic applies to job market and to the interview. And this dynamic is a little bit colder than even social and sexual exchanges because this is business. There's no feelings involved. So it does feel colder at time, especially talking about this. But just understand, this is business. There's really no relationship value you're getting from this business. You need a job. They're providing you money in exchange for the service, your time to complete the job. So just understand that in general, if you are scarce, you have more power. If you're a dime a dozen, they have the power. Think about it as general, say, fast food workers. They have really no negotiating power. If minimum wage, we're up here in New York, and starts at 15 an hour, that's what you're going to be. You don't really have any super useful skills. You're kind of a diamond dozen there. You can be replaced very quickly. So you're not scarce. If you're a lawyer that has a certain skill set and say maybe DWI law and you're applying to a job that they need just a DWI attorney and there's not many of them, clearly you're scarce, you have more power, you can command probably more money, more status, things of this nature. So just understand, this is business, plain and simple. The more scarce you are, the higher your power. The more less scarce you are, the more that you're kind of like everyone else, the less power you have strategize this accordingly. You don't want to play too hard to get if people like you are abundant, but you also want to let them pay through the nose if you're hot and rare commodity. The third thing to understand is most applicants are low power. And this is simply because the frame 
is set up such that you need a job and there are others who have also applied, so they need a job. This means you have lower power, you're looking for the job, they're interviewing you for the job. So you never want to go into the interview with an attitude that they need me. You want to go in with more of an attitude of what can you do for them first. We'll get into that in a minute. But understand most of the applications, most of the time you go for an interview, unless you're supremely high status, you're an attorney, a doctor, whatever it is, CEO, you are going to be lower power. Now, some caveats to that, just so you guys understand, job board applicants are the lowest power, especially when starting out your career. Introductions or randomly meet are power neutral. So if you just randomly meet somebody or you just do an introduction, it's kind of power neutral. So when you can, you want to seek an intro and you want to play it like you don't really need the job, but you're kind of happy where you are, but you're willing to hear them out. The next best move to be is headhunters. They're seeking you out for a position. So you naturally have more power because you already have a job. So just understand the, di the different dynamics and how you can actually get into the job. If somebody's calling you as a head from a head hunting agency, you have a lot of power because again, you already have a job. You don't need their job, but you're willing to move. If the money's right, if these things align, you're willing to, to move. The next thing to understand is people always are going to hire people they like. One of the main criteria to get people to like you is you want to be high in power, high in warmth. And this is going to make them feel like you are one of them. People like positive people. Nobody wants to be around some cubicle where the person who's next to him is depressed and grumpy that it's a fucking Monday. So keep your interviews very positive, very light, outgoing. Don't definitely don't want to come into this interview being grumpy, being depressed in any way. The fifth thing to understand that I touched upon this a little bit earlier, it's what's in it for them first, then what's in it for you. Interviewers are really good about this, guys. It's a little trick that they do. They ask you questions that sound like they're trying to help you develop your own career. They're not. They don't give a shit. These are trap questions. And they're trying to switch your focus from what you can do for them. Instead, focus on delivering and displaying what you can do for them first. Then, once they might send you an offer or they want to take it to the next level, they're investing more time, more energy, more resources into you. That's when you start getting some leverage. Then you can start focusing on fielding your demand, always tying it back to why it's good for them to give you what you want. The next thing to understand, guys, look, this is a very hard truth, especially nowadays. Some jobs are already allocated to somebody else's connection and you're only there to fill a quota. You're only there to make it look good. Look, at in this area of forced equality and this nonsense bullshit of DEI, all these regulations, they need to hit diversity quotas. Now you might be the right person for the job. That doesn't mean you're going to get the job. So you need to understand that you might have nailed this interview, but maybe you weren't the right skin color. Maybe you weren't a female. Maybe you were this, maybe you weren't that. Businesses have quotas that they need to make in order to check the boxes. And in order for regulators to say, yup, they're in compliance with this nonsense or shit. So you might have nailed the job. This is why you always have to keep generating as many interviews as possible. And don't take it personally if you didn't get the job. There's other factors that you just don't control. The next thing to understand is that your weakness 
increases the power of the recruiter and vice versa. If you're starting out, if you're brand new in the field, if you're brand new in an industry, you're already in a weakened position. Or if you can't or won't relocate, this increases the power differential between your employer, who has the demand, and the candidate, you, which are, is the supply. But if you check all the boxes, your power increases. So if you're brand new starting out and you live in Iowa and they need you to move to Miami, understand if you're not willing to move, you're in a very weakened position. They're probably not going to hire you. If you're willing to move and you're young and energetic and you're probably willing to take less than somebody else because you are new, it does put you in a weakened position, but it does get your foot in the door so you can gain experience. You check more of the boxes. You're a better candidate for it. The next thing, number eight, is technical skills are always a given, but you need something else to put you over the top. Now, technical skills can qualify you but it won't always get you over the line without this trust factor. Obviously, unless you're the only candidate or you're so much better than everyone else. But again, back to supply and demand fundamentals. Just because you're the most technically skilled at your job, if they don't trust you, if you're not high in warmth, if you come into the interview thinking you're the greatest shit since sliced bread and you have this attitude about you, it's not going to guarantee you the job. Again, unless you're the only one applying for the job. So keep that supply and demand fundamental. Understand really what that means and let them use that to your advantage. If you're very high in your technical capability or technical competency, add the warmth in, add that trust factor in and you will be far ahead of your competition. Even if you are one deep, even if you know you got this job, you want to start this new career with this new business on a footing where they feel good about it. They don't want to feel like they have to hire you because you're the only one that interviewed or they have to hire you because you're the best one at the interview. I know it's a little bit counterintuitive, but you want them to like you and you want to like working for you. It shouldn't be adversarial. Number nine, guys, unique selling points can make you stand out of the general wash of candidates. But you got to think about this, like only if the interview cares about them, right? So you need to play on them if the interview values them and or is even interested in them. All your other selling points, they don't really give a shit. If they care about that, then they would tell you, then you want to actually push those selling points. Finally, the last thing you guys have to understand about interviewing, every interviewer has power to veto and panel interviews are the fucking worst. But in order to kind of handle these panel interviews, you really need to be power aware because you got to remember on that panel, anybody can say no, and that's the end of the interview. So I typically try to avoid doing interviews like that. There are companies that do panel interviews, but you really need to understand power dynamics. You really need to be power aware of these things because one wrong answer or you rub one of these panel interviewers the wrong way, they just don't get a vibe from you. You've just wasted your time. The others might love you. This one doesn't. You don't get the job. So I stay away from them. And I tell my clients to try to stay away from those as best as you can. That's all I got on this one for today. My name is Jared. This is Magnetic Men's Club. If you found videos like this helpful, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell icon so you know when new videos are being dropped. Leave me a comment. If you need more support, in understanding power dynamics, social dynamics, frame control, click the link down below. It's going to send you to our website where we have a bunch of different options. We have a private paid membership program where we talk all about power dynamics, relationships, frame control, social dynamics. These are all the bedrock, the tools to literally all interactions, relationships, dealing with people. So if your dating life sucks, 
it's power dynamics. If your relationships at work suck, it's power dynamics. It's dealing with power. Click that link below. Consider subscribing to our paid membership. You'll get all the information on that and that link. If you want private one-on-one, -on -one, this is personal one-on-one -on -one with me. My name is Jared. This is Magnetic Lens Club. Have an amazing day. We'll talk soon.